So you've just picked up your first Sony full frame camera, or maybe you're just in the market and looking right now, and you've got this burning question in your mind. What is that one lens that I absolutely need to have that'll cover me when no other lens can? It needs to be versatile, it needs to have great value, and most of all, it has to have amazing quality. In this video, I'm gonna explain why I think the Sigma 24 to 70 is that lens. And make sure to stick around to the end because there are a couple of little cons about this lens that you're gonna to wanna to know about. All right, so this is the Sigma 24 to 70 f2.8 DGDN. And if I could only have one lens for my Sony full frame system, it would be this one 100%. So what is it about this specific lens that makes it my ultimate all around lens? Let's talk about the versatility of the 24 to 70 range. The best way that I can think to describe it is that the range is enough. At 24, it's wide enough, and at 70, it's telephoto enough. You'll often hear people say that 50 millimeters on full frame is kind of approximately the way that we see the world. So you're kind of centering that right in the middle of this zoom range. Anything beyond those two points is starting to get into kind of specific and niche lenses. So anything wider than a 24 millimeter is considered an ultra wide and anything beyond 70 millimeters is starting to push into that telephoto range. But the best part is that there is so much that you can do with all of that range between between 24 and 70. 24 is wide enough for your landscapes. It can be wide enough for some vlogging. It can often be wide enough if you're in a tight space. If you push it up to 35, which is a lot of people's favorite focal length, it's great for things like environmental portraits. When we move it up to 50, that's what I was talking about before, about people saying that that's how we see the world. So it's gonna be a very natural looking focal length. Everybody says, you gotta have a nifty 50. It's built right in here. And then as we push to 70, in my opinion, that's fantastic for portraits if you want to get a little bit more compression, a little bit of that blurry background. Mm. And if you're an APS-C shooter, this is still a fantastic range, converting to about the equivalent of 35 millimeters to 105 millimeters. Pair that with something like the Sigma 16 millimeter f1.4, you'd have beautiful coverage in your kit. Okay, so let's take a second and talk about some of the other options because all I've talked about so far is 24 to 70 and this isn't the only one out there. So in my opinion, there are probably five lenses that are comparable as far as like all around lenses for the Sony full frame E-mount system. First and foremost, there's the Sony G Master, which comes in at $2,200 US. It's an absolutely fantastic lens, but as you can tell, the price is quite high. On the other end of the price spectrum, we've got the Tamron 28 to 75 f 2.8, slightly different focal range, but it's pretty similar still. And that one comes in at just under $900. Then there's also a couple of options that don't have the f 2.8 aperture. There's the Sony Zeiss 24 to 70. It's an f4 lens and it comes in at $900. And then Sony also makes a 24 to 105 f4. So we've got a little bit more range on the telephoto side, but that one also also comes in at $1,400. And then finally, we've got the hero of the video, the Sigma 24 to 70, and that comes in at $1,100. So with all those options and with some that are cheaper than this one, some that are way more expensive, why do I choose this one to recommend? Let's get rid of the Tamron for a sec. So first and foremost, this is part of Sigma's art line, which is kind of their distinction for being really high quality. And it does not disappoint. It's got fantastic sharpness. It's got beautiful color and contrast. It has very little in the way of imaging issues and the build quality is fantastic. Now the image quality is part of why it's part of the art line, but also because it's got pro features on it too. For example, we've got an autofocus manual focus toggle switch. We've got the autofocus lock button that you can customize to whatever you want. We've also got a little lock that stops it from moving past the 24 mark until you actually apply a little bit of pressure to it. It just holds it just enough so that it doesn't move around on its own. It's made with fantastic materials. You can tell when you hold it that it's built like a tank. Even though this lens is focused by wire, it's got a near linear response. I don't know if it's 100% perfectly linear, but it's darn near if not. 
which is really cool and something that I wish a lot more of my lenses had. It has an 11 blade rounded aperture and the bokeh that you get out of this thing is just absolutely smooth and beautiful. And one of my favorite features about this lens is that at its widest, it has an 18 centimeter minimum focusing distance so you can get ridiculously close up. There's actually a warning on the Sigma website warning you not to get too close because you don't want to hit the front element. You can get some really, really interesting close up wide angle shots. Okay, so blah, 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 Sigma art lens, great quality, great build, all that kind of stuff. Why would you pick this over some of the other options? The big advantage over the 24 to 70 F4 and the 24 to 105 F4 is obviously the aperture. With the f2.8 aperture in the Sigma, you've got better low light capabilities as well as more shallow depth of field. And while the Zeiss is a little bit cheaper, I would happily pay the couple extra hundred dollars to get that f2.8. And as far as the extra reach that you get out of the 24 to 105, I find that I don't really want to push past 70 that much. And if you find that that's happening a lot, you're probably going to invest in something like a 70 to 200 at that point. Not to mention the 24 to 105 is a couple hundred dollars more than this lens is. All right, so moving on to old Tammy here. The Tamron is obviously a couple hundred dollars cheaper, but as someone who owned the Tamron for quite a while before I picked up the Sigma, here's what I think. The difference between 24 and 28 millimeters is bigger than I thought it would be. And having that extra width from 28 to 24 made a huge difference in the way that I shoot and how often I need to change lenses. However, the difference between 70 at the long end and 75 on the Tamron wasn't that big of a difference. For whatever reason, once I'm shooting out at that kind of a focal range, it doesn't really make that much of a difference whether it's 70 or 75. But 24 and 28 could be the difference between being able to get the shot in a tight space or not. As well as if you're someone like me and you film yourself, 28 at the end of an arm if you're vlogging, it's just, it's a little tight. It can work if you got long arms. Then of course people are going to say, but Dunna. The price. The Sigma is just over $200 US more expensive than the Tamron is. But to me, I think that the value is definitely there. You've got all the pro features that I said. The Tamron doesn't have anything like that. I never was really wowed by the images that I got out of this. Whereas the minute that I got the Sigma, and maybe this is just something going on in my head, but just like I saw these images that I was taking and I just absolutely loved them. So for a reasonably small percentage more, you can get a lens that feels like it lines up more with what you'd expect from a pro lens. And I know that if you're new to buying camera equipment, this seems like a lot of money for one lens. But once you kind of dig into the landscape of things here, you'll realize that this is fantastic value. And while we're speaking of value, the reason that I would suggest the Sigma over the G Master is just that. They both offer lots of pro features. They both have fantastic quality, but the Sigma costs half the price of the Sony G Master. You could literally get two of the Sigmas for the same price as the G Master. Okay, but of course no lens is perfect. So I wanted to let you know about a couple of the cons or maybe just like little things that you might wanna consider before you buy this lens. First and foremost, this is a pretty hefty lens. It's definitely not small. The barrel does extend, so it becomes fairly large. It's not small to start with and it's pretty heavy. So if you're looking for something light and compact for travel or to fly on a gimbal, this might not be the way to go. If you are gonna throw it on a gimbal, make sure that your gimbal can handle the extra weight of this lens. I mentioned earlier that I thought it was a good combination with APS-C, but if you're trying to stay compact and in that APS-C kind of small world, maybe this one won't be for you. Secondly, something that I've run into that I also noticed some people talking about on the internet, underneath the front element, there are little specks of dust. It started happening just a couple of days after I got the lens. I don't think that there's any really good way to get them out yourself without having to like disassemble the whole lens, but they don't seem to really do anything except worry me. It seems like the location of them where they are as far away from the sensor as they are doesn't make them show up like sensor spots or anything like that. So I don't think they're really causing any problems, but it's still weird. And thirdly, I, I tried really hard to come up with a third reason, like a third con. I just couldn't. I really love this lens. 
So that is why I think that if you're only gonna get one lens or if you're gonna get your first lens for the Sony full frame system, that it should be the Sigma 24 to 70 F 2.8. If you did wanna check this lens out more or you wanted to pick one up, there is a super convenient link down in the description that is an affiliate link. So I do get a commission at no extra cost to you. And I'll leave links to all the lenses that I talked about in this video, just in case you wanna check them all out. And as always, I wanna hear from you. What do you think of the Sigma 24 to 70? Do you think I'm right? you think I'm wrong? Is there another lens that you would recommend instead of this one? Leave a comment down below and on your way down there, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss out on future reviews and tutorials. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you next time.